Joining us now on Behind the Headlines is Professor Kerry Nelson from the University of Illinois. He is the current president of AAUP, and we're going to let him tell us a little bit about what that is. Welcome. Sure. Well, Th glad to be here. Thank um, you for being here. I actually grew up in Philadelphia and in Bucks County. Oh, so, good for uh, you. I retain some interest in Pennsylvania higher education. Uh, and you're the guest it, speaker at, right, at the conference it was this my home. Wonderful. You know, I, I'm in my fifth year as president of the National American Association of University Professors, which was founded in 1915 and which is the major organization that sets policy for the rights and responsibilities of faculty members and indeed of students and for university governance and we've been doing that for almost 100 years. Uh, 2015 will be our 100th anniversary. So you've been doing this for five years. Are you finding this um, economic environment the most challenging that you've, you've faced in your five-year tenure? It probably might have been harder during the Civil War, but... Uh, <laughs> but you weren't uh, here then. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay. yeah, my memory is dim. Um, I think that we... Higher education is now facing challenges that are very nearly catastrophic. We're seeing vast numbers of students denied access to higher education. In California this year, 50,000 undergraduates could not, who would have been admitted uh, to colleges and universities, were denied access because of budget cuts. You know, wow. Those aren't small numbers. Um, and I think we're looking at terribly increased percentages of faculty members teaching part-time, on what amount to uh, wages less than a minimum wage in terrible teaching condi conditions. And we like to say that miserable teaching conditions for faculty amount to miserable learning conditions for students. Uh, their professors are nowhere to be found because they're traveling back and forth from city to city to find classes to teach. You know, I think higher education is in genuine difficulty. And it's only made worse by, I think, the fact that we don't really have a good public understanding of the purpose of higher education. Hmm. It's been sort of um, reduced to job training, and that's certainly part of it, but we live in a democracy. And I think that means we also want to be helping to produce citizens who can be engaged citizens and think critically uh, and be well informed. So I think that we're at risk of really losing some of the fundamental purposes of higher education. Thus, there's more that fits on the plate these days. <laughs> Well, you're, uh, you are going to be giving the main message to all the conference mm -hmm. attendees. So tell us what that is. I think you just gave us a sense of that. Well, I, it's going to be a bit of a brutal message. Um, what, partly what I'm going to say is that in, on, in many states, we have been losing the battle for public funding for some years. And of course, the percentage of public funding of higher education has gradually gone down over the last two decades. I think in 2017, if we're lucky, we'll, we will have returned to 2007 funding levels, but of course that means we will be way behind. So I think we have to begin making a different kind of case. I just don't see that there's much to be gained by going to the legislature and arguing for crumbs. We have to talk about the values that are on the table. We have to try to re-educate not just legislators, but students and citizens about what higher education is for, and especially, I think, you know, it, job training is certainly part of it, but if that's all that it is, it's really not serving the functions that it needs to serve in a democracy. We want to send out students that, you know, that uh, can read a piece of legislation and make a judgment about it. We want to send out students that can listen to a political speech and make a judgment about, them, about it because we want them to contribute to the enrichment and the improvement of democratic process in the country. You can't train students to be citizens. That's silly but you can help equip them to be better citizens. And I think that, so we need a, we need a broader sense of uh, what higher education's purpose is, and that I think might, in the long run, increase uh, the willingness of people throughout the country to help fund public higher education. But, you know, the, just going and saying, you know, you need more money for salaries, you need more money for this building or that building, these sort of small claims are just going to, in the midst of a, what appears to be a long recession, just not going to win the, win the day. They're not going to succeed. And I think you know, what we've been doing in terms of struggling for incremental funding for public higher education is basically over with. I think we've been losing that battle. We need to accept the fact that if we are losing it, then that means we ought to do something else that's more fundamental. Well, what are your expectations of the conference attendees um, that are here as they leave? What do, you, what do you expect of them? 
Well, first of all, a conference like this is always an opportunity to learn, for better or worse, that other folks in other places are uh, face facing the same challenges. Sometimes they have solutions to them. Sometimes they have local ideas that you haven't heard of until you go there. But I think, you know, ideally I would like people to leave ready to help organize more faculty members because I think collective bargaining in the end is the only way to have a collective voice. Too many of our faculty, especially part-timers, are unorganized and they don't have any way of having a collective voice. We need more solidarity in higher education if we're going to have any impact on public perception and any impact on legislative commitments. And solidarity is achieved, I think, only by organizing together. So I think the first thing I would like to see is people even more strongly committed to reaching out to their colleagues of all sorts uh, and of all categories to join together in a movement. I think, you know, I've devoted my life to higher education. I'm afraid, you know, it's on a downward slope. We have the best higher education system in the country. I'd like to preserve it. But I'm going to spend my, uh, my senior years watching it get worse and worse. So I think this is a watershed moment. It's an opportunity and it's also a crisis. Well, thank you so much for being with us, uh, Professor Thanks. Nelson, and best wishes to you with your organization. Behind the Headlines is brought to you as a public service by the Pennsylvania Business Council, envisioning a commonwealth in which residents enjoy a very high quality of life in sustainable communities. The Council works aggressively to define key long-term policy strategies and solutions that make the Commonwealth more competitive, creating and sustaining a better Pennsylvania. Additional underwriting provided by the Worrell Corporation Foundation, based in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And the American Home Bank, a nationally chartered and FDIC insured, yet locally owned and operated bank in central Pennsylvania. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, business in Pennsylvania is our business. Behind the Headlines is also supported as a public service by Daily Express, transporting construction, farm, and industrial equipment throughout the United States. And by Penn Waste, your best local choice for your waste removal and recycling needs. Welcome back to Behind the Headlines. Our next guest is Amy Walters from APSCUF. She is the conference coordinator for the joint APSCUF PSEA conference that we're here attending today. Welcome, Amy. Hi. Thanks for being here with us. You're welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about why uh, a conference like this is important? It's important for academics to not only do research in their own disciplinary areas, but it's also important for them to apply their disciplinary knowledge to their own labor interests. So uh, what would be the objective in having, uh, holding a conference like this? Oh, there are many objectives, one of which is to produce knowledge in the area of labor and higher education, to coordinate some of the efforts between various unions and associations that are involved with labor and higher education, and there's a networking opportunity for us as well. Oh, that's wonderful. What kind of information do you want conference attendees to leave here with? Uh, one of the things I want the conference attendees to know more about is what other organizations are doing. Like I said before, this is a networking mm -hmm. opportunity for people. This is an opportunity for people from various universities and various systems to get to know each other and to understand uh, what the structures of the various universities are and what their contracts are and can, can one association be of assistance to another association. Are you seeing a lot of discussion about um, how the economy is impacting professors across the state? Yes. And what are they, are you hearing anything in particular? Nothing good. Nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of the things we've been talking about is uh, the salary issue. Actually, let me, let me go back one and talk a, a little about an article that I read recently that discussed why parents should want their children to get an education with tenured professors. And tenure is something that we worry about. We have a lot more temporary faculty than we used to. And I always say to my students, do you want somebody to be here when you want a recommendation four years from now? 
do you want somebody to be here who knows you and can write that recommendation? That's not going to happen with temporary faculty members. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're talking about with salaries is there are the, the salaries of our students, the people that we graduate with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees, oftentimes within two, three, four years exceeds that of those of us who taught them. Mm -hmm. And the question then becomes, when we want to hire new faculty into the university, how are we going to attract them in if we can't pay them what they can get in industry? Right. Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot of doom and gloom. You were talking a lot about the economy and the impact it's having not only on the professors but on the students. Give me something positive that, that, that will be taken away from this conference and, and that is a belief that's held by the professors across the state. The professors care very deeply about their students. And I think getting together and talking about the kinds of things we talk about re-energizes us and puts us back in the classroom with, with a new kind of energy and just an affirmation of our commitment to the educational process. We care about education. We care about academics. We care about the curriculum. We care in a way that nobody else can because we're out there doing the job. That's great. Do, do you think that um, parents and students across the state hear that message enough? No. I, I don't think they do. I think a few do. I think when a professor makes a special impact on a student's life, when a professor talks a student through a difficult time they're having, or just puts that little bit of extra effort into a student, that's when we really make our impact on everybody. And I think that we have to remember that that's what we're there to do. We're there to make sure that this student, this person, becomes a better person, a person who thinks more, a person who cares more than when they came into the university. Well, this is the second year of the conference, and I, I, I know you probably hope that it's the second of many more years of holding the conference. What did you learn from last year that you carry forward to this year? That, we, that we can do it. And what do you mean by we can do we it? Can, we can make a difference. We can hold hands with our association brothers and sisters across not just the state, but across the nation. We have people here from from other states, we have people here from Canada, and we're all out there doing the same sort of thing and we're, we can support each other. What's the one thing you want conference attendees to take away? It can always get worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being with us here today. We'll be back next time on Behind the Headlines. Behind the Headlines is a production of the Susquehanna Valley Center for Public Policy, a nonpartisan, nonprofit research organization helping Pennsylvania build a brighter future.